let's start talking about our current assets and liabilities now current assets less current liabilities that becomes your working capital let me put it here working capital is equal to current assets minus current liabilities then you have something what you call current ratio this is current assets by current liabilities let me put a few numbers on the balance sheet out here so that you actually understand these ratios. Uh, let's have a few numbers out here. So for cash and cash equivalents, let's put a number of $30,000. Accounts receivable, let's put $150,000. Inventory, let's have it at 60. For prepaids, let's have a number 30. Accounts payable, um, let's call it another 30. Expense payable, we could have let's say 15. Short term debt, uh, we could have 90,000. So now let's sum it up. What's our total current assets? 180, 240, and 270. What's our current liabilities? 90 plus 30, 120 plus 15, 135. So, guys, what's the working capital here? We got current assets of 270, current liabilities of 135. So working capital is $135,000. Now, when I'm looking at the current ratio, what's my current assets? 270. What's the current liabilities? 135. So the current ratio, that's two. So you could say that the current assets are twice your current liabilities. That's your current ratio. Now, we look at another ratio, which we call quick ratio or the acid test ratio. So we look at quick ratio. When you're doing quick ratio, your denominator remains as current liabilities, but your numerators, that's cash plus marketable securities plus accounts receivable. Something like when you're looking at current assets, they are convertible to cash within the next one year. When I'm looking at quick ratio, I'm looking at those current assets which are very easily convertible to cash. Now cash, that's cash and cash equivalents. That's literally li very liquid. That's immediately convertible. Marketable securities, I can sell them the next day. marketable securities and accounts receivable that's also pretty easily collectible but when I'm looking at inventory we will first have to sell the inventory then collect the cash two steps here accounts receivable just go and realize the cash so in asset test in quick ratio we're looking at current assets which are more liquid so we are not looking at inventory here because for inventory I'll first have to sell the goods then collect the cash we're not looking at prepaid expenses because think about it I have paid my rent in advance can I go to my landlord and take it back certainly not so not so easily convertible to cash I'm looking at assets very easily convertible so you could say in the quick ratio your numerator is current assets minus inventory minus prepaids so let's look at it so cash here is 30 receivables is 150 we don't have marketable securities out here that's fine we look at it so let's say this is 30, this is 150. So the numerator here is 180. Denominator, denominator remains the same, 135. So this becomes like 1.33. So if you look at it, current ratio is higher naturally because you've more, more on the numerator here. You also have inventory and prepaids. But when you're looking at quick ratio, you don't have inventory, you don't have prepaids. So it's 270 minus 90, 180. Denominator remains the same, current liabilities becomes 1.33. So these ratios are often called solvency ratios. So if you want to check whether the business has enough cash to pay its debts as they come due. Current liabilities, they are going to become due in the next one year. Does the business have enough, enough cash or will it be able to generate enough cash to pay these liabilities as they come due? So these are solvency ratios. Now the next set of ratios that we're going to look at is activity ratio. How active is the business? Does it jog? Does it exercise? Does it run? So you have activity ratios. And here we're going to look at inventory turnover, receivable turnover, payable turnover. So inventory turnover, we're talking about how active the business is with its inventory. How soon is it able to turn over its inventory? So buy goods, sell goods, buy goods, sell goods. How fast can it do it? That's inventory turnover.
We'll also look at receivables turnover. So sell goods, go and collect the cash. Sell goods, go and collect the cash. How fast? How many times does it do that? Sell goods, collect the cash. That's receivables turnover. And we'll also talk about payables turnover. You want these two to be very fast. So sell, buy the goods, sell the goods, buy the goods, sell the goods, very fast. Sell the goods, collect the cash. Sell the goods, collect the cash. This one, you want a little slower. So buy goods from your vendors, pay them the cash. Buy goods from your vendors, pay them the cash. You want this to be a little slower than the rest, right? You want to keep the cash with you, pay them a little later. But then not too slow because if you don't pay them on time, that hits your credit worthiness. So payables turnover. So we look at all these three turnover ratios. So when I'm talking about inventory turnover, now guys, whenever you have a ratio which uses the term turnover, remember to turn it over so turnover means you turn it over so when i'm looking at this ratio the denominator would have inventory because it's inventory turnover the denominator is inventory when i'm looking at receivables turnover what's the denominator receivables exactly when i'm looking at payables turnover everybody knows it payables is your denominator we're looking at average inventory we are looking at average receivables and average payables average means beginning inventory plus ending inventory by two beginning receivables plus ending receivables by two beginning payables plus ending payables by two then on the numerator so inventory relates to what your cost of goods sold so the inventory number here relates to the cost of goods sold so that's your numerator here so it's COGS by inventory and you remember that inventory is the denominator here. Why? Because it's the inventory turnover. So you turn over inventory. Receivables turnover. So you turn over your accounts receivable and your numerator here is sales. Inventory relates to COGS. Receivables, they relate to your sales. And we're looking at net credit sales. So sales, less any discounts, less any returns. And we're looking at credit sales because if you're selling in cash, you don't have receivables, you directly get cash. So you're looking at net credit sales out here. Net credit sales. Payables turnover, so you're looking at average accounts payable and payables relate to your purchases. So we're looking at net credit purchases here. We'll talk about the inventory turnover, receivable turnover, payable turnover. Let's, let's use the numbers. Yeah, that'll be better. Now, as I told you, we're looking at COGS by average inventory. So let me put numbers on your income statement as well. So let us say we'll have 900,000, we have 900,000 of sales during the year and the cost of goods sold was 720. Gross margin, 180. And we're looking at average inventory, average receivables, average payables. So looking at beginning at the, at the end of the year numbers. To make this very simple, let's assume that the beginning of the year numbers were the same as end of the year numbers. That'll make it easy for us. So we'll have 150 as the beginning and the ending number, 60 as the beginning and ending number. Now, in reality, these won't be the same numbers, but to make it simple, we're using the same numbers. Payables, let's say beginning of the year, it was 30, end of the year, again, it's 30. So the business is doing the same quantum of work, basically. When I'm looking at COGS by average inventory, so what's my COGS here? 720. What's average inventory? Average inventory is 60 plus 60 by 2. That's 60. 720 by 60, that gives me 12. So basically, the business has turned over its inventory 12 times during the year. So the inventory turnover ratio is 12 times. So it's been 12 times during the year that they bought the inventory, sold the inventory. Bought the inventory, sold the inventory. They did it 12 times during the year. Now let's look at receivables turnover. So let's say all the sales were in credit. So 900 of net credit sales and you have average receivables of 150 plus 150 by two. So that's 150. That's by 150, that makes it six. So basically the receivables turnover was six times. What you could say is it's been six times during the year that the business Sold goods to customers on credit, went and collected the cash. Sold goods on credit, collected the cash. Sold goods on credit and collected the cash. So that is receivables turnover.
Then when we're looking at payables turnover, we're looking at purchases. So because the inventory number remained the same, it was basically 720 of purchase during the year. So what is uh, COX? COX is basically beginning inventory plus purchase minus ending inventory. So because the inventory numbers have remained the same, purchase is same as COX. Now we'll talk about this when we're doing inventory in the later part of the day. So the net credit purchases here, let's say it's still 720 and you have payables 30 plus 30 by 2, that's again 30. So that's 24. So it's been 24 times during the year that the business bought goods from its vendors on credit and paid them. Bought goods, paid them. Bought goods, paid them. Pretty fast. Now, let us look at the cycle. We will look at the operating cycle and the cash conversion cycle. Let's see what's actually happening here. So let's get on that part of the board. So if I draw a line here, a timeline, an activity line, you could say at this point, the business starts with receiving goods from its, cust uh, from its vendors. So buying goods from vendors. So receive inventory from vendors or suppliers. Then after it receives the inventory, it has got to pay its suppliers, right? So depending on the credit terms, it's got to pay cash to suppliers. So let's say at this point, the business paid cash to its suppliers. Then naturally, the business has received inventory. Why did it buy inventory? To sell it. So now the business sells inventory. Now once the inventory is sold, sold on credit here, now you got to, so at this point you recognize revenue because you've earned it and it's realizable. Remember earned plus realized or realizable. So you've sold goods on credit, you've done your job, it's realizable. But the point is when do you realize the cash? That's when your operating cycle completes. So you go to your customers, you collect cash from customers, sell inventory to customers. And at this point you collect cash from customers. So this is your operating cycle. This is when inventory comes into your company and this is when you finally realized, collected the cash on this inventory after selling it. So let us look at the journal entries that we pass at each point. So at this point, when you receive inventory, receive goods from your suppliers, your journal entry is inventory because inventory is the asset that's coming in. Inventory to accounts payable. Because you got inventory, that's what's coming in. Payables, it's due to your creditors, due to your suppliers. When you pay suppliers, that's when you clear off your payables and what goes out? Cash. Now at this point, when you're selling inventory to your customers, so what's your journal entry for sale of inventory? When you're selling it, goods are going out. So it's sales, so accounts receivable debit and sales credit. Now at the same time, you pass another journal entry and we'll talk about this in detail when you're doing inventory today, you pass another journal entry because when you've sold goods, your inventory has gone out and that's also an expense. So you have COGS to inventory. So you have accounts receivable to sales and cost of goods sold to inventory. And this is passed immediately if you're following the perpetual method of inventory. Now, as I'm telling you, we'll talk about inventory in the later half today. Now, so this is receive inventory from suppliers on credit, paid them the cash, sold our goods, sold the inventory that we received. And now after some time, after the credit period that we're giving to our customers, we're going to go to our customers, collect the cash from them. So that would be basically accounts receivable was a debit here. Now it'll be a credit because now it's no longer receivable. We've collected the cash. What came in? Cash. So these are the journal entries that you would basically pass as part of all these activities, activities that you do as a business. Now, we will have a lot of conversion periods out here. So let us say we bought inventory at this point and we sold off inventory here. So this period here, we bought inventory here, we sold it off here. This is your inventory conversion period, ICP. At this point, you had your accounts receivable. They were born here because they were born when you sold goods to them on credit. 
and they closed out when you went to them and collected the cash. So this becomes receivable collection period. Now, let's look at payables. So you had payables which were generated here when you bought goods from your suppliers on credit and at this point you paid them the cash. So this becomes your payables. Let me create more, more space out here. So this becomes your payables deferral period. So when I'm looking at inventory conversion period, a simple way of calculating this formula would be 1 by or rather 360 by inventory turnover. Or you could all, we'll, we'll just develop the other formula later. So let's call it this one receivables collection or receivables conversion period as 360 by receivable turnover. And payables deferral, we'll call it 360 by payable turnover. If I'm looking at my inventory conversion period using the numbers that we have generated here. So inventory turnover, that was 12. So if I do 360 by 12, that gives me 30 days. So it takes me 30 days from the point I buy the inventory for me to sell the inventory. Guys, do you understand? Because it took me 30 days to do it once. So it takes me 30 days to buy the inventory from the, from the time I buy the inventory for me to sell it. So it took me 30 days. That is the reason why I could turn over my inventory 12 times during the year. 30 days, I did it once. How many times would I do it in 360 days? 12 times. Same, same logic applies here. So receivables collection or conversion period. 360 by 6. That gives me 60 days. So you could say it takes me 60 days from the time I sell goods to my customers to go for me to go out and collect the cash. So it takes me 60 days to do it once. How many times will I be able to do it across the year? How many times will I be able to turn over my receivables? Six times. So this is, you could say 360 by receivables turnover. But I'm looking at my payables turnover. Again, 360 by 24. 24 is the payables turnover. So the payable deferral period is basically 360 by 24, which gives me 15 days. So it takes me 15 days from the time I receive goods from my suppliers to pay my suppliers. 15 days for doing it once. How many times across the year? 24 times. Assuming that the year has got 360 days. I know you know it's 365, but for calculation, we're taking it as 360 out here. Makes it easier. Now, another way of calculating these conversions or different periods is doing, so if you're looking at this 360 by inventory turnover, I could simply turn it over. You, I could also say that the inventory conversion period is basically average inventory by cogs per day. I mean, if you realize, I'm just, this is a reverse. So this is 360 by inventory turnover. So I'm just reversing. I'm taking average inventory as the numerator now and cogs as a denominator. So I'm doing cogs by 360 or cogs per day. So cogs per day, cogs by 360. In this case, we could do average accounts receivable by credit sales, net credit sales per day. So you could say sales per day or credit sales per day net credit sales per day. This would be average accounts payable. So the denominator here becomes a numerator average accounts payable by purchases per day. Now you might not, uh, it's not required for you to remember the second part because if you know the first part, you can always calculate the turnover ratios and then calculate the period. But we'll still do, do this. So what's average inventory out here? Average inventory is uh, 60 and cogs per day. So we had 720,000 of cogs for 360 days. Per day, it's two. 60 by two, that's again 30 days. Average receivable. So what's the average receivables? 150. What's your sales per day? Across the year, you sold 900. Per day, you could say you sold 2.5. So that makes it again 60 days. Average payables, that's 
30 and purchases per day 720 so every day you bought 2000 worth of goods again your payables deferral period is 15 days so the result comes out to be the same I prefer this first formula because you can easily calculate your turnover ratio and then calculate the period now guys as you can understand so we're talking about inventory conversion receivables conversion and then payable deferral now the operating cycle that your business has so the inventory conversion this was 30 days payables deferral was 15 days let's put the days here so this period this time period this is let me use the red pen here this is 15 days from the time you receive inventory to the time you pay your suppliers inventory conversion that's 30 days so this is 15 plus another 15 days here receivables collection that takes 60 days so you could say that the operating cycle of the business is 15 plus 15 plus 60. That makes it like 30 plus 60, 90 days operating cycle. How about, so that's the operating cycle from the time goods come in till the time that's converted or realized into cash. What's the cash conversion cycle of the business? Now we'll talk about cash conversion cycle when you're looking at working capital management. But I'll just give you a heads up now. So cash conversion. Guys, this is the point when inventory came into the company. What was the point when cash actually went out? Cash went out here. If I put a box on this, cash goes out here and cash comes in here. So this is the point where cash went out. This is the point when cash comes in. So what's the cash conversion period? So I could say 15 plus 15 plus 60, there was 90 days of operating cycle, minus 15 here. So this part, this part is my cash conversion cycle. So that is not 90 days it's 75 days you could say the cash conversion cycle is the inventory conversion period that's 30 plus receivables conversion period 60 90 minus payables deferral period minus 15 so 30 plus 60 90 minus 15 75 so it takes us 75 days for from the time we give out cash to collect back the cash we're looking at working capital management Highlight, working capital equals current assets less current liabilities. Highlight, current ratio, that's current assets divided by current liabilities. Next highlight, quick ratio. Now, on the quick ratio, we have the same denominator, current liabilities, but the numerator includes only cash, receivables, and marketable securities. And that is, right, equal to current assets minus inventory minus prepaids so quick ratio we're only looking at current assets which are very readily convertible to cash we're not looking at inventory or prepaids here first let's look at receivable turnover ratio your numerator here is highlight net credit sales and for turnover ratios we know we turn it over so the denominator is going to be receivables it's average net receivables circle net because you net your receivables for any allowance for uncollectibles next we're looking at inventory turnover ratio numerator here is highlight cogs denominator you turn it over so in this case the denominator is average inventory next let's look at the cash conversion cycle so we have the timeline there where we first receive material from suppliers so write the journal entry there inventory debit accounts payable credit then the next point we have pay the suppliers so the journal entry write accounts payable debit and cash credit circle cash because at this point cash is going out then we sell the finished goods write the journal entry accounts receivable debit and sales credit finally we collect the receivables right cash debit and accounts receivable credit circle cash because at this point cash comes in So from the point we receive material from suppliers till the time we sell the finished goods, that is right, 
ICP or inventory conversion period. From the time we sell the finished goods till the time we collect the receivables, that is highlight RCP or the receivables collection period. Put a plus sign there. Now, from the time we receive material from suppliers till the time we pay the suppliers, that is payables deferral period. So, highlight PDP and put a minus sign there. Then we have a cash conversion cycle right there equals cash to cash. And that's equal to right ICP plus RCP minus PDP. And within brackets right shorter the better. So the shorter is the cash conversion cycle the better it is for the business. Let's highlight the formula. Highlight ICP equals average inventory divided by COGS per day. And that would calculate to highlight 360 divided by inventory turnover ratio. Highlight inventory turnover ratio that's equal to COGS divided by average inventory. Next highlight RCP or the receivables collection period, highlight average receivables divided by credit sales per day. Also highlight 360 divided by receivables turnover ratio. Highlight receivables turnover ratio equals credit sales divided by average receivables. Next highlight PDP or the payables deferral period, highlight average payables divided by credit purchases per day. Calculates to highlight 360 divided by payables turnover ratio. Highlight payables turnover ratio that's equal to credit purchases by average payables. So guys we know whenever we calculating our turnover ratios we need to turn it over. So an in inventory turnover ratio inventory is the denominator receivable turnover ratio receivables are the denominator payables turnover ratio payables are the denominator and whenever we are looking at the conversion period we are looking at 360 divided by the turnover ratio. We are looking at sensitivity analysis on liquidity ratios. So put a box around sensitivity analysis and write there change in a ratio for a change in numerator and or denominator. So in analyzing ratios, it's important to gauge how sensitive these ratios are to the changes in their components. Now, since a higher number is preferable for liquidity ratios, a decrease in the numerator or an increase in the denominator adversely affects the ratio and the consequent inferences. Therefore, underlying increase in current assets or cash flows, that's the numerator, would improve the ratios. Underlying increase in liabilities or the denominator would adversely affect the ratio. Now, the amount of increase or decrease in a particular ratio depends on the value of the ratio. Now put a box around if the ratio is greater than 1, underline an equal increase in both the numerator and the denominator of the ratio would worsen the ratio. Similarly, if the ratio is again greater than 1, then underline equal decrease in both the numerator and the denominator would improve a ratio. So let's look at an example on this. So you have Q company which is current assets of a million dollars, current liabilities of $600,000. So the current ratio would be million dollars divided by $600,000 that's 1.67. Now the company pays off $200,000 of current liabilities just prior to preparing its financial statements. So where you have current ratio of 1.67 right there earlier. And below this you have 
current ratio after the liability of $200,000 is paid off right there now. So after the liability of $200,000 is paid off using cash, you have the numerator which is the current asset of 800 because it's reduced by cash 200. You have the denominator which earlier was 600 but is now 400 because liabilities of 200 they've been repaid off. So the new current ratio is 2 which is better than the previous ratio of 1.67. So right there ratio has improved. So therefore we can conclude that if the current ratio is greater than 1 and equal decrease in both the numerator and the denominator would improve the ratio.